All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you boop, with a video response to Grace of the Texan in Tokyo channel. Um, but before I get into the response and stuff like that, um, I want to uh, congratulate Grace and her husband Ryosuke on an extremely successful uh, Kickstarter campaign. Um, she raised, I think, well over a thousand percent of her um, original asking price for uh, doing her next uh, comic book, which I also contributed to the Kickstarter as well, so she'll be getting that very soon. And uh, I also got to get to uh, doing more book reviews of hers, so those will be coming soon. But uh, I want to congratulate them both on an extremely successful uh, Kickstarter campaign. And uh, if you guys haven't donated to that, um, I'm sure there's going to be extra copies left over, so don't worry. <laughs> Just be sure to hit Grace up for, uh, for more info on that. But uh, anyway, I'm making this video to uh, kind of talk about something that she posted recently, and that was on creating art when you're happy. And I kind of see this as a trend for artists, and I've experienced it before as well. And it's just kind of the, the feeling that you're not as creatively strong, I guess is one way to put it, when you're in a good place in life because a lot of creativity and art comes from struggle and pain and depression and a lot of uh, negative emotions and it's kind of a coping mechanism in a way to uh, get over those negative emotions, you know, not being good enough for such and such thing or, you know, just being depressed about life and not knowing if you're gonna have enough money to eat the next day and stuff like that. Um, she kind of feels that, you know, while she's extremely, th you know, thankful for all of her recent success and stuff like that with, you know, her YouTube channel, as well as her blog and her books and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's generating a good amount of income and she's very happy with that. On the other hand, um, that happiness is kind of hampering her creativity because it's you know, kind of sapping her drive, I guess, for creativity. And she's kind of, you know, running low on topic ideas as far as like Japan and stuff like that goes. And it happens, you know. A lot of artists run uh, across uh, different roadblocks, different writer's blocks, things like that. I've gone through so many of them over the years, not only doing YouTube, but also doing blogs and all that kind of stuff. And granted, I was never as successful with Grace, so I don't know all the extra external press pressure she must be feeling uh, involving that, but um, I can only speak from my own experiences. So from what I've experienced, it's, uh, it's tough, but you do um, overcome it. It's just another obstacle to overcome, really. And you know, there is no one true way to get over it. You know, what works for me may not work for you, and what works for, you know, you may not work for me. But um, one of the things that I did to get over my uh, writer's block, or just my creative block, as it were, because it's not, you know, specifically towards writing or making videos, it's just an overall creative slump. There, there you go, that's the word. <laughs> So what I did to get over a creative slump, um, number one, I got out of the house. I got out of my apartment or wherever wherever I was at. And before I joined the Navy, I was living in the Midwest in Ohio and now I'm in Michigan, so it's even worse because of the weather. And because of the coldness through most of the months, um, it was difficult for me to get out of the house because you know, I didn't want to trudge around in snow or be cold all the time. But now that it's starting to warm up a little bit, um, I'm going to be focusing more on uh, doing long walks outside and, you know, maybe uh, get my bike working again, get the uh, wheel and all that stuff put back together and stuff like that so I can go on longer bike rides. And that was another thing that I did uh, before I joined the Navy in order to lose some weight. And that's another thing I want to do to lose this damn weight. <laughs> so, but in any event, um, doing, it doesn't have to be like super duper intense exercise, you don't have to like kill yourself doing cardio, but just something that gets you out of, out of the house, out of your comfort zone, which kind of leads into that. Do something 
that is different. Because if you keep on doing the same old thing and expect different results, it's insanity, some people say. But uh, what I did was I went on uh, long bike rides just to kind of um, get my mind off of things, helped clear my mind, um, managed to lose some weight, so that was cool. And uh, I got to see a bunch of cool things, and uh, it helped me with uh, photography ideas as well. And it also, you know, initially it led me into photography actually, because, you know, I was getting kind of bored with the whole YouTube thing, and blogging didn't really interest me all that much anymore either. So when Instagram came out, I was initially skeptical of the platform because it's like, I mean, I can upload pictures to Facebook and Twitter had its own thing. And I'm just like, it just seemed like another program for the kids, you know, just like, oh, look at me, selfie, me, me, me. Because that's, you know, part of the selfie generation. It's all about me, my selfie, ha ha. And stuff like that. And I was just like, eh, I didn't really get into it too much. But then. I started following uh, some photography Instagram accounts and uh, seeing all kinds of really cool things that you can do with Instagram, you know, taking pictures of nature and stuff like that. And my Instagram account uh, really blossomed when I went out to uh, Japan. Although I did a lot of Instagramming before then, but that's when it really kicked off and that's when I really got into it. Now. Nowadays, you know, because I'm not around nature as much being in the city, um, it's a bit more difficult to uh, to get good Instagram pictures, at least, you know, for what I do. So I don't do it as much, but, you know, I usually post a lot of throwback pictures and stuff like that just to do something. But, um, in any event, the whole gist of this is to get out of your comfort zone, do something different, you know get outside, breathe some fresh air, you know, that's one of the best things that, you know, happened for me, you know, helped me lose some weight, and it also um, got my creative spark going again. And uh, also uh, changing up the video formats, you know, doing new series, and, you know, talking more about my life and stuff like that also really helped in, you know, just coming up with new ideas for a series for that, as well as, you know, what I was also working on. It just, you know, helped spark a new wave of creativity for me. Yeah, one of the things that came out of that was NFAX, actually. The Andy Chapandi series didn't really come out of that because I've been wanting to do that series pretty much ever since I started YouTube. Um, it didn't, <laughs> I didn't have the name Andy Chapandi at that time, but it, that didn't come until much later. I just took a lot of new things in my life, put them together for my YouTube channel, and just kind of embraced the change, you know? And that's something that I'm gonna be working on now. I mean, yes, I'm not in Japan. Yes, I'm not in the Navy. So I, you know, can't really talk too much about those. I can only talk about them from past experiences, which, you know, I'm more than willing to do. But again, it's, in the past, my experience is limited now to two years of uh, Japan time and five years of Navy time. So it was, you know, it's it's no longer, uh, since I'm in Japan, this is how this is. And since I'm in the Navy, this is how this is. It's more a case of when I was in Japan or when I was in the Navy. So it's nothing really too helpful moving forward. But uh, on the other hand, now you can be a, uh, source of experience and you can help out uh, people who are thinking about going to Japan or uh, are thinking about joining the Navy or something like that. And that's something I'm going to be doing with my new uh, Life After Navy series where I talk about uh, my life as a recently separated veteran. So I'm going to be talking about like the separation process, uh, what that all entailed, um, getting stuff rolling with your post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, and you know, hopefully getting on some veteran guests so that way uh, you know, we can uh, just talk because it, you know, it's not just about me it, as because I only have one perspective. So it'd be nice to get uh, multiple perspectives as well. So that's gonna be something, you know, just a small little plug for a, uh, a future video series.
basically just to sum it up, um, just get out of your comfort zone, try something new, try something different, uh, collaborate with uh, YouTubers, you know, since she's, I mean, she's not in Tokyo anymore, despite the name, <laughs> Tex in Tokyo, but uh, she's close enough to Tokyo to where she can get on a train and bam, Tokyo. So, but the point of this is, is that, you know, there are a lot more YouTubers, you know, in the Tokyo area than there are in Michigan. Not even like the Kalamazoo area, just Michigan in general. So there's a lot more chances for collaborations and stuff like that. So that's another thing I would highly suggest you do. And even if, you know, no videos come of the collaborations, it's always good to kind of touch base with other YouTubers and kind of see how they do things. Because, you know, I learned so much from looking at a lot of uh, behind the scenes videos from uh, not only people I've met in person and are friends with, like, you know, in real life friends with, rather than just, you know, YouTube friends. Um, I also benefited a lot from watching uh, the pro YouTubers and a lot of their behind the scenes and like what equipment they use, um, how they edit and put, you know, put together footage, how they edit the audio. Um, a lot of, you know, my more recent uh, video editing stuff is derived from uh, me wanting to learn how to do Let's Plays. So I was, I was like looking to change up what I was doing because, you know, the Andy Japandi series, well, you know, I was getting kind of um, bored with it for a while. So I was like, eh, I want to do something different. I want to do something different. You know, there's only so many places in Tokyo I can go to, you know, before I get bored of it. I was really following a lot of Let's Play series at the time and mostly like Game Grumps and Super Beard Bros and stuff like that. A little bit of Markiplier. I'm following him more now, but... So I was looking into, you know, what I need to start a Let's Play, like capture equipment, microphones, stuff like that. Editing programs, editing techniques, because um, putting together a Let's Play is much different than doing like this type of video. Just researching all that and uh, applying it not only to my Let's Play videos, but taking a lot of what I learned from that and applying it to my other videos as well. You know, most notably using compression and using a lot more um, audio editing techniques. So uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up for this video. Sorry got a little too ranty at points, but uh, that's just uh, my two cents on the matter. Um, if you have uh, any more suggestions for getting out of a creative slump or doing art when you're happy and doing art out of positivity instead of negativity, uh, feel free to put something down below in the comments, in the booty boops. Or uh, if you don't feel comfortable, feel free to send a personal message. And uh, I'd also highly recommend uh, doing a video response. Just leave a link of your video in the comments below as well. So with that said, this is the Andy San. It's not for now. Thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning in this video and watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for the liking, for the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.